A warm greeting. Today is Thursday, May 23, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I would like to talk about several areas in the Atlantic Basin that we will be monitoring over the next few weeks. In particular, starting from the first week of June, as we are beginning to see some signs that the Atlantic will soon start generating cyclonic activity. As we have discussed over the past months and weeks, conditions will be extremely favorable for the 2024 hurricane season to be extremely active and dangerous in the Atlantic. In fact, today NOAA published the season forecast, which is the most aggressive they have issued since they started making these types of projections. I will soon be recording a video to discuss NOAA's forecast, so stay tuned to this channel. When we look at this visible satellite animation, we can see a strong trough system located in the Caribbean region, where a low pressure system has developed to the south of the Bahamas. It has a low probability of developing into any type of tropical or subtropical system over the next few days as it moves northeast. Additionally, I also wanted to show you that we have here the first tropical wave of this year. However, it does not have favorable conditions for strengthening, and will continue its westward path, bringing some rain to the Lesser Antilles and northern Venezuela. On the other hand, we have a weather disturbance located over the eastern United States. This disturbance will be moving out into the Atlantic waters, and we will be monitoring it in case we see any type of low-pressure system development. Although we are not currently anticipating the development of a tropical cyclone, we are beginning to see some signs that the Atlantic will soon be activating. It seems that this will happen in approximately two weeks. So once again, the time to prepare is now. If you live along the coast of the United States, Mexico, Central America, or the Caribbean, you should be completing your preparations for this hurricane season. Let's talk a bit about the low pressure system located near the Bahamas. It is associated with a trough system that has brought significant rainfall over Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. The National Hurricane Center has marked the southwestern Atlantic region where there is a low probability of cyclonic development over the next seven days. At the moment, the latest bulletin maintains a 10% chance of developing into a tropical or subtropical system. This disturbance will really have a northeastward movement, which does not pose a threat to land areas except for Bermuda, where some rain and wind associated with this low pressure could be expected. Let's look at the global model projections. Here we have the GFS model which, during Friday night and early Saturday morning, shows a fairly defined low pressure system, potentially a subtropical or tropical system. This is why the 10% chance of development is maintained. However, from Saturday night into Sunday, this low pressure will begin to weaken as it moves over the open waters of the North Atlantic. On the other hand, the European model does not really see much development, although it does show a low pressure system, but it also maintains a low probability of development over the next few days. Also, note that it shows a low pressure system to the east of North Carolina and Maryland, associated with the weather disturbance located over the eastern United States. Although neither model is really projecting the development of a subtropical or tropical system, we will remain vigilant in case this projection changes. And if we look at the ensemble members of the GFS model, you can see that some of them have a low pressure associated with the disturbance near the Bahamas, but none of the members significantly strengthen this low pressure. I agree with the National Hurricane Center's outlook where there is only a 10% chance of development. Also note that there is a low pressure associated with the disturbance that will be moving out of the United States over the next few days. So we will be monitoring this area in case a defined low pressure develops. But again, the good news is that both disturbances will move over Atlantic waters and do not pose a threat to the Americas. On the other hand, the ensemble members of the European model show that only one of the members has any development of a low-pressure system associated with the disturbance over the Bahamas. So this keeps the probabilities of development very low. In fact, none of them develop the disturbance that will move out of the United States. So overall, even though we are monitoring some areas of interest, the Atlantic still does not have favorable conditions for cyclonic development. This will be changing very soon. Remember that in exactly one week, the hurricane season officially begins, and gradually we will see the conditions change to a more favorable environment for the development of tropical cyclones. Remember that we are very concerned, and the projections are not very encouraging. The Atlantic and the Caribbean Sea continue to be extremely warm at levels we have never seen for the month of May. Additionally, the El Nino phenomenon seems to have ended in the Pacific region, although it is not yet official from NOAA. It is possible that in the coming weeks, NOAA will report that we are already in neutral ENSO conditions. By the peak of the season, it is very likely that the La Nina phenomenon will develop. Regardless of whether we have neutral ENSO conditions or the La Nina phenomenon, remember that this helps reduce the wind shear that typically moves over the Caribbean. This, combined with the extremely warm temperatures in the Atlantic, will create extremely favorable conditions for a hyperactive season. In fact, all experts and official agencies continue to project one of the most active seasons on record. Now, let's talk a bit more long-term. 
particularly during the first and second weeks of June. As some changes are approaching, it is possible that we will have to monitor the Caribbean region and just west of Central America, as there are indications that these areas could be a bit more favorable for the development of a low-pressure system. The NOAA Climate Prediction Center has marked the region towards the west of Central America, or towards the south of Mexico and the western Caribbean region, as an area of interest for cyclonic development between June 5th and 11th. And although for the moment the probabilities of developing a tropical cyclone are very low, these will definitely be the two areas we will be closely monitoring once the Atlantic hurricane season officially begins. The first signs of possible cyclonic development are beginning to be seen in the ensemble members of the GFS model where during the first week of June, some of them already see the possible development of a low-pressure system to the east of Nicaragua and Honduras, as well as in the region towards the south of Mexico. Although this suggests that we should be monitoring this region for early to mid-June, it is also worth mentioning that the GFS model has a bias for developing systems early in the season. Many times this forecast does not come to fruition, so for now, there is no need to worry. We will simply continue to monitor the trends of the American model. The ensemble members of the European model, which tend to be more conservative, show some weak low-pressure systems just east of Nicaragua and also in Pacific waters. But for now, the signal for possible development is extremely low, so it seems reasonable that the Climate Prediction Center maintains a low probability of development in this area during the first and second weeks of June. The ensemble members of the European model currently only have a 10-15% to chance of developing a tropical depression during the first week of June. In the eastern Pacific, the probabilities are between 20 and 30 percent. So these projections give us an idea that during the first week of June, it will be a bit difficult to see the development of a tropical system. However, during the first 10 days of June, historically, we have seen the development of some tropical depressions in the Western Caribbean region, especially to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize, also in some regions of the Gulf of Mexico. Note that the Eastern Pacific region occasionally sees the development of a tropical depression during the first and second weeks of June, so we will simply be observing the trends over the coming days. Again, for now, there is no reason to worry. Additionally, during the next two weeks, a phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation that is not favorable for cyclonic formation in the Atlantic will continue to be present at least until early June. However, models already detect a pulse of the Madden-Julian oscillation that will be moving across the Pacific Ocean and should eventually reach the Atlantic and Africa region during the second week of June. That is when conditions could really become favorable for cyclone development particularly in the Caribbean region. And although this is a long-term forecast, it seems that by mid-June is when the probabilities of cyclonic development in the Atlantic will increase. If we look at this graph, the red colors represent conditions that hinder the formation of systems in the Atlantic. This is why the Atlantic remains calm, and the areas we are monitoring really have a very low probability of development over the next few days. By the end of the first week of June, we begin to see a phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation that could result in more favorable conditions for cyclonic development. Eventually, for the second and third weeks of June, it is projected that a phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation will be extremely favorable for the Atlantic to become active and have favorable conditions for cyclone development. It seems that from mid-June, the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean Sea will become much more favorable for the formation of systems and the start of a potentially hyperactive season. Remember that here at Hurricane Info, I will continue to stay alert to keep you informed throughout the season. I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Please go to the bottom of the video, to the red button that says subscribe, click it, and then click the bell to get notifications when I upload new videos. Additionally, remember that this year we will continue with our sponsorship plan. After subscribing, please click the blue button that says join to explore some options for supporting Hurricane Info. Well, that's all for this video. I will continue to monitor model trends, especially during the first and second weeks of June. Tune in to Hurricane Info, as I will soon be uploading an explanatory video about the forecast published today by NOAA. So for now, goodbye, and see you later.